are actually outside today. Usually we do this inside in one of our uh, office rooms here, but because we're going to be using spray paint, uh, we needed to go outside so that we A, wouldn't be surrounded by all these fumes and B, so that we wouldn't spray paint valuable objects, which I think is pretty re reasonable to be outside with this. So, um, and speaking of outside, I don't know about where you are, but where we are, it is getting hot. It's about probably 90 degrees right now with a lot of humidity. And on Friday, we're expecting high temperatures of 98 with like crazy humidity. So. What does that mean? It means that people are probably gonna be spending more time in the air conditioning, but it also means that your plants are thirsty. And so it's really important to keep your plants well hydrated during these hot days. So the best time to water on these hot days is in the morning if you can. So if you have time before you head out the door for work or you know anywhere you're going, be sure to water. And the best way to water would be to take the hose and directly at the base of the plant, let that hose soak in. So sprinklers are nice and convenient. However, they can cause some leaf problems and also don't give a deep watering. Uh, the deep watering really helps to, you know, keep that plant well hydrated. So uh, that's definitely important is if you can water in the morning, I suggest that sometimes you can't, like me last night, wasn't able to, I wasn't able to water in the morning, so I uh, had to water last night. So I did, you know, give everything a good drink of water last night and as well as this morning, knowing that it's gonna be so hot and they're gonna be losing a lot of moisture in their leaves. So be sure to keep your plants super well hydrated. If you're not sure if they need water, which sometimes happens, they might not look wet or sometimes they're wilty because they have too much water. Uh, my suggestion, it's really simple, is to, to stick your hand at the base of the plant and feel the soil. If the soil feels dry, it probably is gonna need some water. If it feels wet, then you know you could hold off for a day, but really it's all about just like testing it out, sticking your hand in the soil and see if that plant, if the soil feels dry. Um, so good deep watering with the hose in the morning, do a soil check, and um, if you're gonna go out of town, hopefully you have a neighbor or a friend who can you know, help you out and water your plants for you. So you don't wanna leave for five days during these hot stretches, and then all of a sudden, you know, you come home and all your plants are not looking so good or worse, they're not alive. So be sure to water your plants, and also for you, if you're working out in the garden, be sure to stay hydrated. So, you know, if at this time of year, you know, some things need to be done, weeds need to be pulled and everything, so sometimes you can't avoid being out there. So keep yourself hydrated and keep your plants hydrated. All right, so that was my tip for watering because it's really important when it's this hot. So keep hydrated. So now, uh, one update before we get to the exciting part of the live video is going to be this, uh, if you remember from a couple live videos ago, we planted this hummingbird vertical garden on the air and this is how it's growing. So as you can see, we have some marigolds flowering, we have uh, what looks to be, I think going to be like a moonflower or morning glory, I'm not sure which one was in there. A couple of the holes that we had filled in the seeds looks like they may have gotten dried out a little bit. So um, when I've watered this, sometimes I've laid it flat to make sure I get water in all the all the plants. Um, otherwise, just water at the top and make sure that the water is running through. But really exciting that our our hanging bird or hanging bird hummingbird vertical garden <laughs> is you know flowering right now and filling in. So. Uh, hopefully next update we'll have more flowers to show you but um, and to the next thing so allium flowers if you're not familiar with allium they are a fall planted bulb that blooms in late spring so in Wisconsin allium are typically flowering anywhere from like the end of May to even early July we've kind of had a late season so I'm still seeing some allium flowering but it's usually in May and June so if you're in a warmer climate you probably saw them in you know maybe April and May but generally May June is the time of year that allium are flowering 
Now, once they're flowering, the dried flowers will stay in your garden, you know, for at least a month. Um, they stay up, so it makes them really fun to use for these, uh, for using them for like these dried arrangements. Um, here we have three allium that we painted and we have this really cool vase that has, uh, you know, a lid that, you know, kind of sets the flowers up just how you want them. And you can use them in like a clear cylinder vase, just a bunch of different colors. I kind of like how the stems at the bottom are all kind of corresponding colors as well. Um, and then I even added some to this like tin, this tin bucket that we have here. So, um, those are some ways to use it. And for people who are going to get married, which by the way, our graphic designer Sarah just got engaged. So want a big wish, Sarah, big congratulations. And if anyone else, oh, <laughs> there she is, <laughs> wants to say congratulations. Uh, this might be an idea if you are getting married in summer or fall, a good way to have really fun Like a baby shower or you know like if you're having a family reunion and you want to you know jazz up the picnic tables a little bit you can definitely do that with these colorful allium if you know there's a certain color that you have picked for your wedding or a theme uh, this is a really fun way because spray paint comes in so many different shades and colors so um, these are what we've done so far and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to color your allium so I have a couple allium that I saved that are were blooming. So these I believe are a white allium. Um, one of these is Globemaster and the other one is Gigantium but I because they're from different gardens I'm not sure which one is which. Um, so I'm gonna actually do three of them so you can see how they're kind of different shapes and this white allium you can see it's still green it hasn't even dried out yet but they still work well for this application so if they're dried or if they're still green go ahead and don't be afraid to you know spray them with whatever color you would like so I'm gonna start with this one here first and there's I would suggest cleaning any debris out so if you have any leaves that have collected um, in there. Oh, definitely. So, got one more leaf. Otherwise, you'll just have painted leaves. I mean, which isn't the end of the world, but. And these are holding up pretty good still. I mean, they're pretty, pretty durable. So, let's see. Uh, let's go with the turquoise metallic color. So like I said, again, we're doing this outside because we are using spray paint and uh, didn't want to A, paint things that shouldn't be painted and also be surrounded by fumes. So if there's any background noise or anything, I apologize. But, um, you know, we just got to think about the what happens when you spray paint. So see how it's like kind of a wheat color. It's it's nice. good right so far um, I feel like I missed a couple spots and I should this color reminds me of like a peacock that like real pretty kind of metallic turquoise color so luckily we have a little bit 
bit of breeze, which is going to help to dry it out. But I'm just going to set this on the table um, while I wait to paint it. to do this one because I think um, this is actually the same the same one here how it kind of turned out so oopsie. all right well let's go with the this is copper so at first I wasn't sure if I liked the copper because I felt like it kind of looked like how dried flowers look anyways but then after looking at it more, and especially with the blue, I really did like how the copper turned out. have like a, a natural a natural color I think um, you know I know they make gold spray paint and silver spray paint so I kind of think a cool combination would be to do like a gold a silver and a copper like to have all those like metallic but kind of like natural tones together that would be really nice if you're doing like kind of a rustic wedding or if you had like gold as part of your theme so all right so here's the white alley I'm so we'll this down to let it dry as well and then um, this is the last one so this one uh, we will go with aqua here and really as far as the colors go I mean you can do whatever whatever colors you like or whatever colors um, you know match the theme of your event if you're gonna use these for an event or if you have a, li a living room that, you know, has certain colors, you could definitely match it to that color scheme. Um, for Halloween, you could do, you know, Halloween colors, orange and black. You could pre prepare ahead of time, because these stay in good condition for a long time. You could prepare ahead of time and do green and red for Christmas colors. Um, uh, you know, red, white, and blue is really popular using like silver spray paint, red spray paint, blue spray paint. Um, and then the kind, kind of one of the cool things about this is I'm going to show you a trick how you can actually use these as outdoor decor as well. So this is the aqua and this flower is a little bit more dried, a little bit older, but it's still, still holding up really well. So we're going to let that, let that dry. And then my last trick okay so this is my last tip and trick with the allium is these orange safety flags that are used for marking out areas um, they're pretty affordable you can pick up a pack of them at like your local home store but um, or pretty much anything that's like narrow that can go into the stem because the stem of these allium are hollow if you wanted to keep your allium outside in the garden for longer and not just use them for indoor decor, since the, ha the stem is hollow, you just insert the flag into the stem like this. It's about as far as it's going to go. And then I'm just going to use the grass here because I don't have like a garden area, but then just go and so if you wanted to you know line your walkway here if you wanted to line your walkway with these allium flowers in all different colors you could or after they're done blooming if you want to paint them and keep the look that they bring to your garden I mean you could even paint them purple or pink the color or white the colors they usually bloom in and you can make it look like you have allium blooming all summer so that's even more fun so between the indoor decorations using them for centerpieces for decoration in your house if you're going to a picnic and you want some fun centerpieces um, or you know sticking them in the garden 
there is so many possibilities with these allium. It's really inexpensive. Spray paint's only a couple dollars. Um, if you have the allium, they're already in your garden. If you don't have any allium, you can get them on hollandbulbfarms.com. I believe they're 50% off right now as our fall pre-order sale is still going. We'll ship them to you in fall. You plant them this fall and then in spring by next summer, you can have a yard or a home full of really fun, colorful allium. So those are my, uh, my tips here. A little fun summer project. You know, fill your vases, any any containers you have. They don't need water. They're easy to grow because they, <laughs> they don't need water. So they're definitely going to stay looking good for a long time. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully we can bring you another one of these DIY projects in the future. And uh, we'll check in with you in a couple weeks. Bye.